give it like another week and I'll probably get poached to work for Helios too. I'm sure they want a media critic. I'm Gayfesh and today we'll be talking for All Mankind, Season 3, Episode 3, All In. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Spoilers ahead. The space race is really ramping up now. I'm actually surprised to see that Aleda is back on Earth already. I guess we're at the point where trips to the moon are so routine that the trip can be yada yada But she's gotta be back home because NASA has to accelerate their timeline in order to beat Helios to Mars. Since the habitats were originally supposed to be launched in 94, ahead of the 96 mission, and aren't even ready yet, they decide to repurpose some new Jamestown modules for the Mars trip instead, and Aleda pitches a Venus slingshot trip outside the Earth-Mars launch window. It'll take longer, but still arrive a few months before Sojourner gets there. Danielle realizes that she's gonna have a problem with Danny as her co-pilot because they both go by Danny. Also because he's apparently falling back off the wagon and picking up bar floozies and doing breaking and enterings, so she grounds him so he can get back into the AA program and fix his issues. Ed finds out and immediately poaches him for Helios, despite Danielle's protestations that Danny needs to deal with his issues and not get a pass. I also think it's going to be a big problem considering Karen works at Helios and Danny's falling off the wagon because of her. Speaking of poaching, Karen approaches Aleda for a job as well, offering her double the salary and stock options and pointing out how she won't be seen as Margot's girl anymore. But Aleda points out how much Margot has gone to bat for her over the years and she's happy to be seen that way. Her husband thinks she shouldn't have turned it down because they could use the extra money for childcare and elder care for her father whose dementia is getting worse but Aleda doesn't want to admit it. With Aleda passing, Karen poaches Bill Strausser instead. Turnabout is fair play, of course, and Kelly actually convinces Danielle to take her on the NASA mission even though she could have easily gotten a spot at Helios. Fortunately, Ed takes the news well. After all, she's following in his footsteps at NASA, he can only be so disappointed. The episode actually opened on a montage of Margot and Sergey meeting at the IAC conference every year, and them growing closer together. This year, things get a little hot and heavy, until he reveals that the Soviet Union can't make the 94 launch window at the present rate unless he can get a peek at NASA's nuclear engines. Margot has been helping Sergei over the years in the interest of keeping astronauts and cosmonauts safe, but sharing nuclear secrets that can be militarized is a bridge she won't cross. So, KGB agents show up in the hotel room and try to threaten her with compromise. She says she still won't budge, so they start to strangle Sergei right in front of her before letting him go and telling her they await her decision. They never explicitly say that she does it, but the episode ends on a two-year skip as the launch window to Mars is ready and everyone makes their launch, including the Soviets. Oh yeah, and since it's 1994 now, looks like Ellen beat Clinton to the White House. Good for her! But it is a little silly that one of the main characters becoming president of the United States is treated as a tiny subplot. So what did you think of this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love how the command center on Polaris looks like the beginnings of a Star Trek bridge. Ed's got his Captain Kirk chair and everything. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video with your friends. Subscribe to my Patreon to get shouted out in future videos. Check out my Bandcamp for banging tunes, including all the tracks you heard in this video. Follow me on Twitter at GayestFesh, and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Rest of Both Worlds, where I go through Star Trek The Next Generation with a friend who's never seen it. Thank you to all my patrons, with a special shout out to Piftel Cakes and Renee Vorbeck. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you all in the next video.